What you're about to see is a full-length sample tutorial from my new online course, Synthesis 101. In this program, you'll learn synthesizers inside and out, so you can make your own signature sounds and stop relying on presets. Also, as a huge thank you for watching my videos, I have a massive free giveaway for you guys. You can get this Ableton template complete with all the synth patches and samples by simply clicking the link below and downloading it from my site. So let's get started on this bass patch. We're going to use Ableton's Analog Synth. Analog is a paid add-on to Live, or it also comes with Sweet. And I really like Analog for basses because it has a really fat, meaty, rich sound to it, similar to a lot of vintage Analog Synths. We're going to start by activating both of the oscillators, and we're going to choose Saw Waves for each one. The reason why I'm selecting saw waves is what I'm going for here is a very abrasive and aggressive bass sound. It's going to be a wobble bass, so we want to have that more aggressive type of waveform, and the saw wave is perfect for this. We're going to take oscillator 1, and we're going to knock it down by a full octave, giving us a nice full spread between them. And then we're going to take the two oscillators, we're going to detune them up a little bit from each other. Three cents up on one three cents down on the other. Okay, we've got a MIDI clip loaded in here already. Let's just check out how this sounds. Now let's start to carve out some of the sound with a low-pass filter. I like to use low-pass filters on basses, especially when using saw waves as the oscillator waveform, because saw waves tend to be very abrasive in the top end, and you don't always want all of that in there with the bass. So we're going to take filter one, and we're going to take both of the oscillators and route them entirely through filter 1. So we're just going to use the single filter. We're going to have it in low pass 12, and we're going to back off the frequency. Next up, I want to shape the sound using the amplitude envelope. And in this case, we have our bass patch playing at the same time as the kick drum. So I want to knock the bass out of the way whenever the kick drum is playing. And rather than using sidechain compression, we can just do this simply by increasing the attack of the bass. So the bass comes in a little bit more slowly, leaving room for the initial transient of the kick drum to be heard clearly. So I'm going to set this at, say, 150 milliseconds. We'll put our envelope in linear mode. And then I'm going to increase the release time just a bit here so it's not quite so abrupt. Leave it at 20 milliseconds. Now in this case, we have both oscillator 1 and 2 routed up through filter 1. So we don't need amp 2 active. So we're just going to go to the global shell, and we can use these quick routings to select this one, which is going to reflect the signal path that we want, and deactivate amp 2. As you heard at the beginning, this patch is all about the wobble. So let's get into that now. We're going to use an LFO, in this case LFO number 1, and we're going to set it to be synced to the host tempo change our rate to 16d and now we need to assign the lfo to filter one and have it move the cutoff frequency so we're going to click on the filter shell and down here we can see under frequency mod we have an lfo parameter now we're going to play around with a couple settings here and just see how this influences the filter Yeah, I like it around 3. Next up, we're going to thicken the patch using a little bit of unison. We'll activate unison here, set the detune at about 20, and we're going to take the number of unison voices to 4. Let's check this out. I'm also going to add some glide. Let's activate that, and let's set glide at about 60%. See how that sounds. Yeah, I like how that helps it to slide gently between the notes rather than moving really abruptly. Now that we have the LFO mapped out, we can experiment with our filter frequency to find the sweet spot. Our output on the patch is clipping now, so we're going to bump our volume down, let's say negative 6 dB or so, to keep things nice and clean and in the green. 
There we go. I like the sound of that. In order to keep things interesting and avoid the bass from sounding too static, we're going to get into some automation now. We're going to click on the rate for LFO1, which exposes that parameter up here in our track automation. And I'm going to go through and simply draw in some automation to this parameter to keep the LFO rate nice and interesting. So I've drawn in different breakpoints and used automation to control and vary the rate of the LFO. Here's what we've got so far. Now I'm going to make some modifications to our LFO. I'm going to change from a sine wave to a triangle wave. And I'm going to take the retrigger parameter and turn it on. And what this means is every time a new MIDI note is played, the LFO is going to start from its beginning position again. I also don't really like how the waveform for the LFO is starting at a peak. I want it to start at a valley and move upwards. So I'm going to take the offset and shift that by 180 degrees, which is going to get our LFO to start at the very bottom. I like the way this patch is sounding so far, so let's give it a listen in context with the rest of the track. So this is sounding great, but now it needs a few effects to help it blend into the mix. The first thing I'm going to do is sculpt a bit of the sound out using an EQ8. I'm going to set a mid scoop point at 800 hertz. I like to knock out a little bit out of the mid of the patch, especially with basses, because it just makes them fit into the mix a bit better, create some room for the snare, things like that. So I'm going to shave out, say, 5 dB at 800 hertz. Then this patch has also got quite a bit of aggressive top end in it, so I'm going to use a high shelf right there, set that at about 12k, and shave a few dB off there too. Now I'd like this bass to be a bit wider, so I'm going to go ahead and add a chorus plugin in now. We'll dial in the chorus plugin in a sec, but now we've run into a common problem when adding this type of spatial effect to our bass, is because this is a bass patch, we have to be careful about how the sub comes through, and chorus isn't a great effect to have on sub. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a separate sub layer now by putting this into an audio effect rack. So I'm going to click on analog, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go group. I'm going to expose the chains here and I'm going to call this base and I'm actually going to grab an entire new instance of analog and put it in a chain below. I'm going to call this sub. Now in order to make room for the sub I'm going to use the EQ8 we have here to high pass the base. So I'm going to set the EQ to 150 hertz I'm going to put it into high pass mode. And I'm going to take our chorus and our EQ effect now and bring those inside the chain. So these will be on top of our first instance of analog right here. And those will sit right next to it so that EQ will only apply to our first instance of analog. And the sub instance will be clean on its own. Our sub patch is going to be very simple. We're going to use one single oscillator. So we can use this routing here. But we're going to turn off the filter because we don't need it. We're going to take the sine wave and we're going to knock that down by one octave and we're going to keep this just as a pure sine wave. But we need to be careful to mimic the same amp envelope settings that we had on the first base. So we're going to use that 150 millisecond attack. We're going to use the linear slope and we're going to take our release to 20 milliseconds as well. So now when these play in unison, they should sound similar. But before I play them, because we've effectively doubled our bass here, I'm just going to knock the volume down of each one of these guys by about three decibels. So let's check this out. Now sub doesn't have a lot of harmonics in it, but I'm going to add an EQ8 in here and low pass it, just to be on the safe side. We'll take this guy, put it into low passing mode, and type in 150 hertz. And there's our sub. Now we can go crazy with our top bass without worrying about affecting the sub. So we're going to take our chorus plugin and dial this in now. 
We're not going to do too much to it. We're going to back off the wet and try just a little bit. And let's see how it sounds. Now that's going to need a little bit more bite. So I'm going to use one of the saturator presets, one of my favorites. It's one called a bit warmer. We'll throw that right after the chorus. Now it's giving us out of the box about 6 dB of drive. So I'm going to make sure I'm going to knock down the output of it. So I'm gauge staging properly. And I'm just going to change the waveform type to analog clip. Yeah, I like that. Next up, we'll add a flanger. I like flangers on bass, especially when we have them frequency separated like this. But out of the box, the flanger usually adds way too much feedback. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to knock that down. I'm going to increase the high pass to close to a K. And let's check out how that sounds. Maybe back off the wet dry a little bit. There we go. Another thing I like to do to give bass a little bit of a wider sensation around it is to use a very short ping pong delay. Ping pong delay is great because it has a built-in filter and it will oscillate the sound between the left and the right channel. So what I'm going to do here is take it off of sync mode. I'm going to dial in a pretty short time, 12 milliseconds. I'm not going to give it any feedback. I'm going to back off the wet dry and we'll leave the filter settings around there. Now if I turn the feedback up, it's going to give it a very metallic sound. Because it's actually creating a pitch to the delay. We don't want that, but we just want a couple of those little slapbacks that happen through the filter of the delay. It's going to give it a sense of space around the bass without washing it out too much. So I like how both the top and the bottom bass are sounding now, and I want to help them to blend together so they seem like one cohesive instrument. And whenever you're layering a couple of instruments together, I find a little bit of compression really helps, and then we'll fire things into a limiter. So we're going to take the compressor device, we'll put it into RMS mode, and change the attack and release settings a little bit. Maybe 150 seconds on the release, a little slower. I'm also going to give it some knee, give it a few dBs of knee, and take the makeup gain off. So let's check this out. There we go. The compressor acts a lot like audio glue, where it just helps these two separate elements to sit together a little bit better. Now, because this is one of our main bass patches in the track, I'm also going to run it into a limiter to help bring it really front and center in our mix. Yeah, I like the way that sounds. As a final finishing touch, we're going to add a reverb return to the bass. So I've got a network of return tracks already set up here, and return C is a short reverb. And this reverb has been high-passed, so it's okay to use in the bass. I would never use a full-spectrum reverb on bass because we don't want to add reverb to the sub. But I've high-passed this reverb at 140, and I'm also using the low-cut and high-cut filters on the reverb device itself. So we're going to add in a little bit of reverb to our bass. Now that we're finished with our patch, let's check out how it sounds in the mix with everything else. So that wraps up our bass and analog. Remember, you can get this patch and all the other patches included in this template for free by clicking the link below and downloading them from my site. And if you want more information on the synthesis and music production courses I offer, there's a link for that too. Thanks for watching.